Hi, it's Lou Collins, and today I want to show you how you can create this amazing ink lift technique using the stamps you've got at home, a little bit of water, that's about it really. We're working with Distress Inks and Distress Oxides today, both in different ways. So the first technique is using Distress Oxide. I'm going to be going with black soot and I've got a sort of copper colour mirror card here. So um, this needs to be done with a cardstock that's got a resistant surface. So mirror card is absolutely perfect. And I love this for the sort of aged and vintage look that you get from it. Uh, I'm going to be using a nice solid stamp for this. So this is the travel um, stamp from uh, Vintage Travel Collection from Textures. And I've got it on an acrylic block. Again, this ju is just going to um, help me with positioning my stamp. Um, and if I want to lift it up, put it down again, I can. I just find I've got a little more freedom than using a stamping platform or load and fold or something like that. I've got a heat gun here just to speed the process up a little bit. So let's get started. We don't need many tools for this. I have got a resistant mat to keep my area clean underneath my cardstock. And I'm going to open the oxide. Now this I find works 100 times better with oxides than inks, which is why I'm using it. And I'm just going to cover my cardstock here with the ink. Now this is a good idea to have um, as a water spritz and a piece of paper, old piece of paper with you, just so that you can mop up that excess when you've finished doing this, because you can see we're getting a lot of excess ink in the background, and that's just going to help you use that up without wasting it. So we are covering this stamp with lots of ink, and what I'm doing, sorry, this paper with lots of ink, what I'm doing is using lots of different strokes, lots of different directions, to give almost an old brushed metal look to it. So I don't want the, if I do the square, I can see the square in there. So I'm just making sure everywhere's fairly well covered. You'll still see a little bit of the metallic cardstock underneath. Okay, now this, is not very quickly going to be drying on your cardstock. Okay, so this would take hours and hours and hours to even be touch dry. Uh, this is because this is a water-based ink and obviously water does not dry quickly onto resistant surfaces. It's not porous, it's not going to soak in the moisture. So what I'm going to do is just give it a very quick blast with a heat tool. And this is just going to take the dampness away, the initial sort of top layer of dampness away and make it sticky. So the ink will still be remain sticky. You'll see that you'll lose a little bit of the sheen from the wet ink as it dries, so you'll know it's working. I'm not going to do this too much, just I want it to remain wet. I don't want to dry it completely. There we go. Now, if you want to, you can just touch the corner and just make sure that you can see your fingerprint in it, but it's not lifting up too much there. Now I've already cut my cardstock down to be the size of my stamp here. So I'm just going to place my cardstock on there. I've got my dry stamp on here. This is clean and dry. It's a photopolymer stamp. All the texture stamps are made from photopolymer material, not silicone or anything like that. So they keep their stickiness and it's this stickiness that we're looking for. If your photopolymer stamps sort of lose their stickiness, very often I get inks and I get things like uh, paint and embossing powder stuck to them while I'm working. You can wash them, warm soapy water, leave them to air dry. That's really important, air dry. They will go back to their original stickiness. Okay, so you get that clean back. So I'm just going to place this stamp directly over my card stock as central as possible. Now, like I say, this is super sticky ink now. So when I lift this up, you can hear that it's sticking to the cardstock and that's what I want to happen. So I'm pressing down all over. What I'm also going to do is lift this over because it's sticky. I know if I lift that stamp up, it's going to bring the paper with it. And I'm just going to brush over the entire image, okay, making sure that all the parts that I want to have contacted that stamp. Okay, and then peel off and you should be left with your beautiful stamped image in reverse. So you can see my ink on there, that's all on my stamp. I can just wipe that away, get a wet wipe, spritz that with water and some kitchen towel, you can wipe that away. Now I'm going to give this another quick blast just to dry it off a little bit further. And what I adore about this is that texture that we've got. So it's not a solid impression. 
we've got lots of texture in the actual uh, world there but you could use this with any design so you could use it with letters and words you could use it maybe even with floral stamps uh, a nice large butterfly there's lots of ideas you have an experiment with what you've got laying around at home so I've just given that a quick blast just so that I don't affect it too much more with my fingerprints. Now, like I say, this is going to remain sticky for a while so I can still on there put my fingerprint in. You'll be drier around these areas. The way I find com to combat that rather than setting it aside for days to dry is to use some clear embossing powder. So I'm just covering the entire image here with clear embossing powder. Bear in mind you're warming up here mirror cards. Now some mirror cards are made with a film over the top and this could, this heat could cause that film to bubble with the heat if it gets too hot in one place at any one time. So just be careful to heat this from a distance and keep, keep the heat moving around as much as possible. You may want to test your particular mirror card before you do this technique just to make sure that you're not going to ruin everything by adding the heat too hard, too quickly, uh, and allowing that mirror to bubble up underneath. And as soon as your powder is melted, it's a good idea to move on to the next area. For this next technique, we're going to be moving away from Distress Oxides and looking at Distress Inks and lifting off the color there. So I've got a Dusty Concord and Blueprint Sketch as my inks, and I've blended them onto a piece of smooth white cardstock. Um, this took quite a lot of blending to get the ink really nice and thick. Um, it's smooth so I won't get any additional texture in the image. So nice and smooth, I'll have all the detail I want only from the stamp. So what I'm going to do now, I'll just move that to the side, is I'm going to spritz my stamp. I've got a large stamp here from my steampunk collection from Textures Range. Um, this has a beautiful detailed typewriter in it and then you've got the sentiments as well. So we're just going to be looking at the typewriter stamp here. Again, I've got it on an acrylic block and I'm just going to lightly spritz all over the detail part of that stamp. So there we go. Now, what I like to do is just take a piece of kitchen towel or some sort of absorbent towel or cloth and just absorb the water from around the edge of the stamp. Now that water for a long time isn't going anywhere. So you've got time to work at this and just, just brush around the acrylic block, just taking off the excess water there. Okay, so now bring in our inked piece of cardstock. I blended that using some brushes so I get a nice smooth finish. And I'm going to just stamp directly onto that inking there. And I'm going to press that down. I'm going to hold that for a short while as well. I'm not going to just stamp and then lift up straight away. I want to make sure all of the water is sitting where it needs to. Now, there's not so much water on there that it's running anywhere, should hopefully just remain within the stamp. Now, I think that's all the water absorbed by the paper that's going to absorb, so we can now lift this off. And already, we can start to see the beginnings of that image come to life. Now, what I'm going to do is use my heat gun to dry this off, and as it dries, those areas will lighten even further. So there's that almost watermark image of the typewriter in the inked background. It looks absolutely fabulous. Now, of course, you're not going to get immense detail in here because the water will spread a little bit. Um, and it's a very pale, quite a subtle image. This is perfect for backgrounds. I mean, how amazing would this be if you had something like a floral stamp and you could do it all over the background? It would look absolutely lovely. And there we have two different ways of using your Distress Inks and your Distress Oxides and then lifting up the colour for a different sort of a reverse effect to your stamps. You can find the details for everything I've used in the description below and I'd love it if you could just pop that subscribe button on so that you can keep up with all the tips and tricks from my channel.